talking about prime factorization. Okay, we, got, we started I was fixing to start talking about that yesterday uh, when I had to stop. Um, All right, so factor tree, prime factorization. So let's look at, let's say I had this. Let's say I have um, 68, and I want to prime factor it. Okay, now prime factorization, prime factorization is the product of the prime factors move this down of a given number okay the prime factorization is not the factor tree not the inverted division that is the process to get that okay so back to 68 if you're going to prime factor this Inverted division, it would do this. Now, remember, with inverted division, inverted division, you can only use you can only use um, prime factors. Okay, with factor tree, you can use any factors. Okay, inverted division, you can only use prime factors. Um, if you're prime factoring this, you would go 2 because that's the first prime number. So, in other words, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, ones like that, okay? And then you would take 2 into 68 goes 64 times. 2 into 34 goes 17 times. So the prime factorization is 2 to the second times 17, okay? That's the answer, okay? This is the work, how you get the answer. Okay, the other one is the actual answer. Okay, so if you do factor tree, then with 68, you know, real honestly, you may not know that, you know, the one that is 4 and 17. Okay, you may not know that. You may just do 2 and 34 just like you did with inverted, we did with inverted division. Okay, but if you have the factor tree, the 17 is prime, so I don't do any further than that. And then the 4 is 2 times 2. Okay? Now, those two are prime. Okay? And so I have 2 times 2 times 17. Okay? And so that's still, once again... It's the same answer. Both inverted division and factor tree will yield the same answer. Um, where the factor tree is easier is when you're dealing with some smaller numbers. For example, um, you're dealing with 50. Okay, you're prime factoring 50. Well, prime factoring 50 would just be 5 times 10. Okay, that's fairly simplistic. And then you go 2 times 5. That's... There's your prime numbers, so it's 2 times 5 to the second. Okay, inverted division, same way. You can start with 5 here because it's prime. 5 goes into 52 to 10 times. 2 goes into that 5 times. So either way, you're still coming up with the same answer, just whatever way you like best. You can use both ways. For example, um, when you get the number... 588, okay, that's a pretty big number, okay, may not be able to think of two factors of 588 real quickly, so you just do prime, you do the inverted division, okay, I know two goes into it because it's even, two goes into five two times, remainder one, two into 18 goes nine times, two into eight goes four times. Another even number, so 2 goes into that once, 147. Okay, now, 
147 is not even. Okay, so 2 doesn't go into it. But we talked about yesterday the rules for divisibility. 1 plus 4 plus 7, that's 12. So 3 goes into 12. So 3 goes into this number. 3 goes into 14 four times, remainder 2. Four, 3 into 27 goes 9 times. Then 7 and 7. Okay, and so that gives me 2 to the 2nd times 3 times 7 to the 2nd. Because all your prime numbers are just out here on the outside. Okay. Um, like I said, factor tree, you know, realistically, I don't know which one you would use. Um, you might look at it and say, okay, looks like 8 may go into it. Uh, so we'll say 8 and 74. Not 70, yeah, 74. No, not 74. That'd be 28. Yeah, 8's not going to go into it. 4 will go into it. 4 goes into it 1, 4, 7 times. No, 11 won't go into it. So you'd have 4 times 147. So you go to 4, you got 2 and 2. 147, we've already said 3 goes into it, so 3 and 49. And then 49 is 7 and 7. Okay, so once again, prime factorization is the same because there's a rule called the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Okay, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic says that every single number has exactly one prime factorization. Okay, so for 588, one time you're not going to get 2 to the second times 3 times 7 to the second, and then the next time get 2 to the first times 3 to the second times 7 to the second. Okay, you're not, that's not going to happen. Okay, the prime factorization for each number is uniquely for that number. Okay, now, so I want you to try to do this one. Try to do... 225 on your own, okay? Prime factor, 225 on your own. Factor tree? Yeah. yeah. So you did what? Like, you did like 5 into 225? You did 5 and... I did 5 into 25 and 45. Yeah, you can do that. That's fine. But that's what, like for example, um, 612. Okay? The reason I like inverted division, because most of you, what you're going to do is you're going to say 2 times 306. That's what most of you are going to do. If you're going to do that, <laughs> then why not just go ahead and put it like this? Because the next thing you're going to do, you're going to divide 306 and you go, uh, let's see, 2 and 153. And that's why, I mean, you're just doing inverted division. You're just making a long factor tree doing it. Because with the big numbers, you know, you're not, and that's not un. It's not uncommon for people not to know the factors of big numbers. Okay? Now, you may be able to see a number and go, okay, hey, this goes into it or this goes into it. And, you know, like 144, most of you would know 12 times 12, just because it's a multiplication table. To this pro To those type problems? No, because whether you do it the factor tree or whether you do it inverted division, you're still going to come up with that for, for 225. Now, how you got there will look different, but you know when we get on a test, I'm just going to tell you to do the prime factorization. I'm not going to tell you which method to use. I'm just going to say, come up with a prime factorization. And I'll, you know, when I'm given directions, I'll say, use factor tree or inverted division. It doesn't matter to me. 
So I've got some, I mean, literally, like in the eighth grade, in in our in in both classes, in or in my honors class in eighth grade, uh, in my in the other seventh grade class, I've got students that use both of them. Like for example, we're trying to find the greatest common factor between 49 and 98, or 90, or 142. And they'll do 142 with inverted division. They'll do 49 with just factor tree. So they'll use both of them on the same problem. That's fine, you know. And I don't, I don't care which one you use. If you need to use both of them for the bigger numbers, you use inverted division. For the smaller numbers, you use in, uh, factor tree. It doesn't matter because realistically, when you're dealing with small numbers, it is easier to use the factor tree. If you're dealing with numbers that are inside your times tables. Most of y'all would do better doing factor tree. But the problem is, like, I'm looking at the work right here, and there's only one, two, three, four problems that fall into those tables out of the nine we're going to do, out of the ten we're going to do. So you've got to, you're going to have to, you know, like the other numbers, we're doing them. Like, one of them is 864. You know, now, 864, eight goes into it. You know, 8 goes into it, so I can figure 8. I know 8 goes into it 108 times, but that's me. I'm an adult. I'm supposed to know that. <laughs> Y'all are in 7th grade. You may not know that, okay? So with 868, you may decide, hey, I'm just going to use inverted division because you just start with 2. And you divide 2 into it until 2 won't go into it anymore. And then you move to the next prime number. The what? The three to the second, five to the second, yeah, yeah, you would, and that's the that's the right answer. But your tree will look different than mine because, like you said, you did this. Your two twenty five looks like this, like that, right? Okay, and then you went here, nine and five, and then you went three and three, but you still. You still come up with two fives and two threes, and it looks different than this one does. And that's the thing about the factor tree. The factor tree will look different. Even with inverted division, for example, 225, I could have started with three. On my inverted division, still starting with five, like I did there, I could have started with three. Three goes into that 75 times. Three goes into that 25 times. Three doesn't go into 25, but five does. Three to the second times five to the second. So that's what that fundamental theorem of arithmetic says. There's only one prime factorization for 225. Regardless if you do factor trees or inverted division, there's only one prime factorization, and it's five to the se three to the second times five to the second. And they can be flip-flopped. You know, if I say the answer is three to the second times five to the second, Five to the second times three to the second is the same thing. Okay? All right, let's go back up here to 612. As I was dividing it, you got two, 153. Three goes into that. Three goes into 15 five times, three into three once. Three goes into that 17 times. So two to the second times three to the second times 17. And so that's your answer. Okay. Madison, did that clear it up any? Yeah. Okay. Sure? Okay. All right, your homework. Yeah, I know, homework. Eh, wah, wah.